Hi, everyone. Um, so I saw Roshan wearing a suit and a jacket, so I thought it was appropriate. It doesn't happen too often. <laughs> awesome. What's my purpose? Walking the talk pre Amani was easy. In fact, it came so naturally that I didn't even know I was on a journey of change. I went on an 18 day hike to Nepal and climbed up to Liko Lake, one of the highest lakes in the world for its size, at 4,900 meters in altitude. It's incredibly beautiful. A turquoise lake surrounded by glaciers and monstrous mountains. The earthly silence broken only by the sound of the ice cracking and shifting and breathtakingly cold, possibly the quickest skinny dip of my life. Besides the frostbite, something else changed within me that day, something that I'm still trying to discover today. But I came down from the Annapurna circuit, I found a cozy coffee bar with good Wi-Fi, and I logged on and I canceled my MBA application. It just felt like the right thing to do. Then at the same time, coincidentally, I came across the Mind Institute on my Twitter page. Curiosity struck. Not even halfway through reading about what the SIM program was about, I had butterflies in my stomach. The same butterflies you have just before you pick up a beautiful girl on your first date. It was my gut telling me that this is right, that the Marnie program is right for me. So I applied immediately, phoned my sister, and told her I'm moving to Kenya. What I learned from this experience was to trust my initial gut feeling, and then to have the courage to act on it. Once you make that commitment, everything else seems to fall into place. I entered the Marnie Sim program looking for grassroots change in my life, wanting to move from an effortless corporate job to finding my purpose in a social enterprise. Those words, finding my purpose, oh, they haunted me. They became a day-to-day -day discussion at Amani, so much so that Gigi wanted to write a story about my frustrations around it. I toiled day in and day out. I had sleepless nights over it, especially when it came to the last month of the immersion phase. I still remember the day the struggle became real. We were at the Amani office. I was there with all my fellows. We were about three weeks before we had to present our social innovation idea. The room was bustling with energy. Everyone was writing on the wall, sharing their ideas, telling each other what they had done and what they still need to do. Besides me, I sat there by myself with a blank A3 piece of paper and had absolutely no idea what to do. I hadn't found my purpose, so how could I do a project about change making? I started to think that this wasn't for me, that I just wasn't a change maker, and it was time that I go back to my comfy lifestyle job. In a room full of energized and vocal people, I felt alone. I felt the panic levels raise. I tried to zone out and ignore the joys of my fellows as they spoke about what they're going to do, but I couldn't. I envied them and I pitied myself. By the end of that day, I had even worse idea of what I wanted to do. So I escaped and I hid away in my lesser explored introverted self. That's a dark and lonely place for an extrovert like myself. I wondered how had I let this happen? How had I left a high paying job, a good relationship and a comfortable life and now be struggling in the middle of Nairobi? It was during this low and isolated period that I had to remember back to how awesome it felt to be there, to be learning from Roshan, one of the founders of Amani, and the fellow guest speakers about change making. I had to stop envying my fellows who knew what they wanted to do, but admire them and learn from them. And most importantly, I had to be resilient and persistent if I wanted to find the change within me. Post the immersion phase, I decided to stay in Kenya and start looking for jobs. 
This is where it was meant to get easy. Roshan mentioned there'd be plenty of jobs in the social enterprise sector looking for your skill set. He mentioned plenty. He didn't say hundreds. I was overwhelmed. As soon as I started searching, I ended up applying for jobs literally all over the globe. From New Zealand to Asia, Kenya to London, New York to San Fran. I didn't know what to apply for, so I applied for everything. Eventually, I had several interviews planned. All of them went the distance. Well, almost. Four to five interviews in, but I couldn't sign any of them. I failed and came short at the finish line every single time. I got desperate, so I flew to Amsterdam. Amongst other things, I trusted my gut, and I went to go see Robert Wolf at Think, our communications specialist. Robert made it sound so simple and gave me just a little thread of advice to work on. He just said facilitation. Back in Kenya, I started reading about facilitation, which led into a lot of design thinking reading. Um, again, another course that we had at Amani. I then remembered that Britt, our leadership instructor, had told me what my superpower was. And yes, you heard right. Superpowers are a real thing. He said it was my ability to work with a group of people, to connect with them, and to create the right space to take them along their journey. As I started to feel a bit more at sense with the purpose of facilitating and design thinking, I had to remain persistent that I was going to be a change maker. I had to shift my mindset of what my purpose was to be and what it truly meant to be a change maker. Perhaps my purpose wasn't to come up with the next best product, but it was to work in servitude to others to take them along their journey. It was now September, four months since the immersion phase finished, four months of not working, four months of living with my cousin, and four months of still looking for my purpose. But I became more hopeful, and it was then that I came across an application for a design thinking role in Cape Town for a fintech company called Zona. After reading about the application of the company, I had those same fuzzy butterflies in my stomach, and I knew this was the one. This was the opportunity for me. I applied and confidently awaited a reply. Within a week, I was in Cape Town having three days of interviews, which in pure startup fashion was three days of a lot of coffee. I climbed Table Mountain with the team I'd be working for, and I connected with like-minded people. I'd found my home. I've since then started the design thinking department. I've held ideation sessions across four countries in Africa and helped our team to solve problems quicker and communicate and, and understand our customers better. I helped in launching the Mozambique operation and I held forums with our top agents and entrepreneurs. I embraced the value of empathy and now work hand in hand with our customers design products that really matter. So have I found my purpose? Well, I love what I do. I've been able to take the staff that I work with, as well as our customers, along a journey of real impact. So yes, I say so for now. My journey wouldn't have been possible without the values that Amani has taught me. It was the global and growth mindset, and the courage and the persistence to become a change maker that Amani helped me to discover. Over the last 20 months since I climbed to Lico Lake, I have endured the pains of finding purpose. I have questioned my own abilities. I have questioned my willpower to be a change maker. It has been one of the most difficult and loneliest times of my life, but one of the strongest and best in terms of growth. We are all here, either as aspiring change makers, looking for our way to impact other people, or we are already along that journey creating change. Wherever you fall, make sure you trust your gut, you listen to those crazy butterflies in your stomach, and you have the courage to act on your, act on your instincts and the belief that you are already a change maker. Thank you.